Carriage has arrived. Carriage has arrived. What? No. Who is this? I, I don't know. Just what? a carriage sh what showed up. What did you say? What did you say? The carriage has arrived. A carriage? Carriage. It's not more Americanos. Magdalena, please go check. We don't want them here. We don't. Those people are bad. They're aliens. They're coming. They're taking away our land. They si, si, don't speak our language. We do not like aliens here. Si, Get those, tell those Americanos to go. I will tell the abuelo about the carriage. Find out. Gracias. Try Gracias. to get rid of them. Yes, I'm your daughter. Oh, my daughter. So, so nice to meet you. And and you are uh, Magdalena. I am just the maid. Welcome. Well, I I have come. I have you heard of the Cornell? So I'm in Doña Cornell. Oui, we know. Have, have given me a letter. Say, Senor de Valle. Oh, unfortunately, no, her mother is not here. But her mother is not here. And when your your buena is here. Buena and is her, here. Oh. And her auntie. Oh, we have my auntie at home. Oh, may I, may I meet them then? Would that would be a pleasure. Yes. I, I have a letter of introduction. Would you like that? Sure. Okay. Perhaps you could. Yes. This is from uh, Doña. And Don. Doña Mariana Correa. Yeah, Cornell. Yes, yes. Then in Los Angeles. Shall I just follow you? Please. This way, please. please. This way. So many people around the rancho. I had heard that hundreds work here. Oftentimes we have anywhere from 20 to 200 people staying here. So no wonder so much activity is going on. What Very a beautiful, so. beautiful home you have, Belle. Oh, ga gracias. Welcome. Oh, very lovely. It's so good to have you here. Well, then I, I will wait while you take the letter of introduction up. And perhaps I could look around and see some things while I'm w awaiting you. That would be wonderful. Gracias, señora. This way to our home. This way to the casa. Oh, thank I've read you. so many of your 
your story is. Oh, I, I believe, too, you write for Century Magazine. I do, and I'm here because I am writing an article. About us. Uh, uh, well, about, about uh, Father Rancho. Sarah. And, and uh, I also am hope to include the ranchos. I also include the mission. And I am especially looking for life uh, on the rancho. So that's why Don Connell said, oh, this is the place I must come. So I am on my way to Santa Barbara now, though. And I, I only have a couple of hours, but I would most like to see. Where did you come from on Los, Los Angeles? I, from, from Los Angeles, Angeles yes. Did you, did you spend the night at the mission there? I, I spent the night actually at the hotel in Los Angeles. Then we went on to San San Fernando to see the mission there, and now we're on our way to Don Pico. Wait. Did you see Don Pico? On Grace Pico. He's, he's doing well, Senior. He is doing well. He's doing very well. It was a pleasure to meet him. As as the Coronels, the Coronels are. I have such a, a love for them. They are such gracious people. So tell me. I, about your rancho, he said it was from a land grant. Would you like me to tell her? Please. The land grant was given to Antonio Del Valle. And he, what was that year? He would be my husband, Juventino, his grandfather. Antonio worked in the missions, and then when they were secularized, he applied for a land grant. So in 1839, we were given the 48,000 acre Rancho San Francisco. Oh, no joy, <laughs> And then, unfortunately, Antonio died. But part of his estate went to Ignacio, Juventino's father. We actually have 4,800 acres here. Do you? And what do you do here? Do you, do you uh, I, I see animals, I see crops. We uh, have sheep. Lots of sheep. The sheep shearers will be coming in a few months. Oh, and, and they, they come from Temecula. Oh, do they? Yes. I, I'm from they there. They are experts in their field. Yes, they, the Indian sheep shearers. Yes, yes. Yes, I'm, I'm familiar with them. And what else? What other crops do you grow here on your, on your huge Oh, farm? we have wheat and barley. We saw all the fields. And Ignacio, early on, he planted the grapes. And he built the winery. Did you see the winery? I did. I saw the winery. Does that mean you have your own wine and brandy? <laughs> Perhaps what? you could serve a bit of that to our guest. Magdalena? Please, do sir. So he first planted the grapes and then built the winery. We have the finest brandy and wine in all of Santa Barbara County. Ooh, we I have a ward. Oh, yes, it is. It is excellent. Oh, and of course, he planted you. the olive trees. We have a contract with the church, you know. We provide all the altar wines and all the oils for the services. You We're so very nice. proud of what we produce here. That's but why you're such a busy ranch? And now we're planting citrus. Have you tried citrus? Uh, I, be I believe I've had you have that? Have you have that? They have it in Colorado. They, they do grow not it. grow it. Is your family there? My husband is there. My my second husband, Mr. Jackson, is in railroad and banking in Colorado Springs. Hmm. Have you heard of Colorado Springs, perhaps? No. No. Sir. I'm originally from back east, though. I'm originally from Massachusetts. Um, Amherst. Are you familiar with the the states on the east coast? Not very. Not very. Perhaps Belle knows about that. She is very bright, you know. She's just graduated from the Kamula School. And where did they have the school here, Belle? They had the school here on the Rancho. Oh. Yes, currently it's in the basement. Uh, of the no, basement. Well, good. And, and eventually, will you go on to more education? Yes. Oh, thank you. Oh, yes, yeah, she will go down right. to Los Angeles. Down to Los Angeles. Yes, yeah, she will stay with the sisters there. And they will teach her proper ways. May I propose a toast to your health? Yes, yes. But when we're talking about the school, I too graduated from the Kabula School. I know it's hard to believe, but I came here shortly after I was born in 1842. My father was a ranch manager.
And so when this building was, was constructed, when this home was made, which was in 1853, first they had a school down in the library area. And that is where I went to school. But I'm talking too much about myself. Was the place tell us more about was, was it this large? This is a very large, large adobe. It started out as four rooms, and then eventually it was a 20. 20. Well, Abuela, tell her about Wonka. Oh, oh. don't bother with that now. Well, I, would like to, I, I, would, I would like to tell you a little bit more about why I have come. I actually. Yes, please do. Uh, a few years ago, when I was doing writing my book on travels, my various books, I attended a conference, a seminar, about the plight of the Ponca Indians. And at that, that's the Ponca. That what are the Ponca? The, the, the Ponca. Are they from? Uh, it, it's a tribe. Are they from Orange County? It, no, no. It's, it's a tribe back east, back east in in uh, in uh, the Midwest, the Midwest part, close to the Mississippi River, mm -hmm. and close to that area. What what tribe is here? What tribe? Oh, there are several. The Tataviam and the Chumash. The Tatavi and the Shumash, yes. But what about the Poncas? Well, the Poncas were being pushed off their land, and there was a great outcry among the reformers of the day, something that I never thought I would become. But I was already an ink-stained woman, you know, a woman with stained hands from writing, which was frowned upon, and still is, as you well know. As a matter of fact, when I first started writing, you might have noticed the spell that some of my earlier work just had HH, because I didn't put my name. But when I first started getting interested in the Pankas, I found that the treatment of the Indians in the United States is just deplorable. And last year I wrote a book, Century of Dishonor, and in that book I talked about all the broken treaties, so many, so many, hundreds and hundreds of broken treaties between the United States government and the Indian tribes. So one of the other things I'm writing Does it about... talk about our Indians here? Yes. <coughs> as I, well, I am to add a chapter on the Mission Indians. So one of the reasons I'm here for Century Magazine, besides to write the articles that I've already mentioned, is to look and see what's happening with the Mission Indians. Well, I hope you treat us better. I've heard that that book said very, very bad things. We treat our Indians very well. Do you? That's, that's my, my daughter, Ladonia, she even encourages the Indian children who show an aptitude, she would educate them. We bring teachers in from Los Angeles, and their children are educated. We do not do harsh things with our Indian children or the Indian workers. I hope you will not oh, say that. No, I know. There, I, do you know why I know? Because one of the reasons I met Don Cornell, do you know that he has, he and Mariana have a great heart for the Indians? Also, I'm they, sure. they they are trying very they're hard. Kind people. Very bishop. The, the we bishop. Californios are very kind to people. So so she she has they both care so much and they said, come to Camulo. So I I have no doubt that you have taken very good care. Do you employ a lot of the Indians that used to live on this property? Well, yes, we do. I, I must admit, frankly, in the beginning, right after the land grant, the, there was a bit of a problem with the Indians. You see, Governor Alvarado gave us the land. We had fought to get it back from the Spanish. But the Indians, they thought it was their land. How silly is that? It's our land. But we take care of them. And we, after they left the missions, many of them came back here. They worked very hard. Yes. We treat them well. And I understand from the Cornells that your daughter has taken in many orphans. Are some of those orphans? Some of those include orphans. Indians, orphans, hmm. when she came? Oh, that reminds me. When we were living in Los Angeles, before we came here in 1861, we did bring with us eight orphan children. Oh, and, and they served us well. Yes, they served and us And we well. saw that they were well cared for just the sisters had taken care of them in the convent. 
And do you have do you have any particular stories about uh, about what your adventures were with taking care of all these extra children? My goodness! Well, that does really well, what? How many children do you have, by the way, Susanna? I think. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. I don't have to think about it. I have ten. You have ten. <laughs> of course, <laughs> we did lose a few. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the, the Senora has had twelve. Well, but not many of them have lived to adulthood. You mean she means my cousin Isabel. Isabel, yes, the singer. Bell is her daughter. Bell's mother, yes. yes. So, so you, what did you? What were you telling me though about one of the orphans? I suppose I should tell you this story. There was. You think she might be interested in? A, What's her name? Blanca. Blanca. Oh, Blanca. Yes. Well, Blanca. Yes, Blanca. Blanca. Blanca was not originally an orphan. She was the daughter of my my daughter's <coughs> best friend, Felicia Anna Endart. And when Felicia Anna Endart was sick unto death, she called my daughter Isabel and her husband to come and be at the bedside. And when she knew that she was going to be dying, she gave into my daughter's care her daughter, Blanca. Now, Blanca was about five years old, about the same age as one of my granddaughters. And so, when they brought her to the rancho from Santa Barbara, they were given a jewelry box with the family jewels that were to be given to Blanca when she grew up and got married. That was to be the wedding present from the family. And so my daughter uh, was very much in honoring that request. And so she put those uh, jewel box away in a very safe place. Well, of course, Blanca grew up with the rest of the family. And when she was uh, old enough and had fallen in love with a young man, she had a wedding here. And uh, oh, the fiesta, it went on for nearly a week. And she married very well. And then she moved away. And we hear from her, she does write to us. But yes, that was one time when she was a very much a part of our family. She took the jewels, but the Signora still has the chest. Oh, so it's still part of, of the Signora's. Unfortunately, she keeps the key with her, uh -huh. so we can't show it to you now. But Belle did get her jewelry. Belle did. Well, do you have more stories? I, I love what you talked stories. about the Indians. orphans, the Indian orphans. Ah, oh, Abuela, tell, tell about Gua Guadalupe. Wow. Yes, the beautiful Guadalupe. Guadalupe. And who was Guadalupe? Was she a friend of the families too? Well, well, one day when my daughter was in her carriage uh, going to take care of a sick friend, she was going along and going along and she happened to look out the side of the carriage and she saw a little Indian girl sitting beside the road. Well, that wasn't unusual because, of course, we have the Indians working here and my daughter thought that this was probably uh, one of their children and in the course of the day someone would take her and back to the village. Well, I went on to care of my sick patient, and it was late afternoon when I was coming back, and I saw the same little girl sitting beside the road. And I called out, hello! Oh, my, my daughter called out, hello, hello! And no one answered me. But at the sound of my voice, or my daughter's voice, the little girl looked up, and I saw that she had blue eyes. I immediately knew that she was not all Indian. And so I called to her and she was frightened. But I got out of the carriage and I helped her up into the carriage and I brought her back here to the casa. And when we got to the casa, my daughter said, we are going to take care of this little girl. And she is very much close in age to Bella and to my own daughters, Josefa <coughs> and Isabel Segunda. And so she grew up here. And so one day, when she was about 14, my daughter had a visitor here. 
His name was Alfonso Ridley. And his uh, guest room was right over here in this room. And the girls were taking care of the chapel. That was their chore. They had to take care of cleaning and putting fresh flowers on the altar. And so it seemed that that day, Guadalupe was at the fountain with the vases, filling them with water for the roses that her sisters were cutting. And Mr. Ridley looked out the window, and he saw her at the thing. And so immediately, he toweled off his face and went to the door and called to my daughter. And he said, who is that beautiful young girl down there? And she said, would you like to come and meet her? And he said, of course. And so they came down the steps and went over toward the fountain. And he said, you know, she looks very much like my sister. Well, by the time that they had reached the fountain and Guadalupe turned to see who was coming, she said, my daughter, to Mr. Alfonso, I do not think that she is looking like her sister. I think she is your daughter. What, he said? My daughter? I don't have any children. I am not married. And she said, well, the story I have is that um, her mother was an Indian woman, but the father was a white man. And that uh, there's some connection with some of the Indian families up in the Tahoe. Oh, ho, said Alfonso. I was up there, and yes, indeed, I, I did have a romantic liaison with a lovely Tejon Indian woman, but I never thought it would have resulted into the birth of a child. <laughs> <laughs> My daughter said to him, well, I do believe that she is your daughter, and we have named her Guadalupe. And he was delighted to meet his beautiful daughter, and she was very happy to know that she had a father. Mm -hmm. And when he went away after his visit, he took her with him. Mm -hmm. And she was married. And I think it is what you have a story called Cinderella. I think I could say that she was married and lived happily ever after. Mm -hmm. What a lovely story. And you we have many such stories here at the Bullos. Well, you have mentioned also two places I would very much like to see. You mentioned the fountain that I saw when I walked up here behind yes. the fountain. And you have your own chapel. Yeah, I'm imagining the chapel. Could you show me the chapel later, before, later. before I leave? Oh, later, will? Oh, please. I would later. love to see before I leave. And you worship at this chapel. It's your Every, once a month, Father Pujol comes from Los Angeles. And during the day, my daughter has everyone come to the chapel in the morning, and they have prayers. And there are many baptisms and uh, confirmations and weddings, and the clergy come from Los Angeles. And this is almost like a second church. We are specially uh, sanctified by the uh, Diocese of Los Angeles, and so we are a Roman Catholic Church. Well, I would love, so love to see that, if Belle could show it to me, and perhaps around the grounds. Unfortunately, uh, soon I will have to leave because we're going all what the way. What is it? Excuse me, but I see, what are you have in your lap? Bill, what is that? Oh, I have a, this clock. It's been ruined by someone doing the laundry because they laid it over the rose bush. Is and that it's tour? It's tour. Look at that tear. Is that from, from the, the chapel? Bit. Is that from the, the chapel? Oh. I'm well, sure, Senora, you could mend it. Oh, someone could mend it. Yes, yes. Some of the women folk here do very fine needlework. Oh, it's too bad that someone was so careless. But you have many other furnishings in, in the chapel. Yes, and I'm and sure. And many other beautiful things to show you here at Camulos. Do you like our new painting? It is beautiful. That is Camulos. Is it Camulos? There's this artist who had come from the east. I'm not sure if he's from, what did you say you're from? Massachusetts. Massachusetts. No, I don't think so. But I know his work is in the capital. His name is James Walker. And he comes to the countryside and he paints 
what he sees, and he's capturing our California way of life. And that is Fulvantino in the picture by Osman. How wonderful. Isn't he a handsome gentleman? Yes. Perhaps you'll get to meet him too. And I, I hope to be able to write about, somehow write about your beautiful rancho and can do something the lifestyle in yes, California. Uh, Senora, I know that there are many things that you wish to see here. Now, the lady would you check with the driver and see how much time this has, this Jackson has? I do hope you will have time to take a bit of refreshment before you go. Perhaps you can stay overnight. I wish that I could, but I must to get, uh, eventually, I am going on to Santa Barbara, then from Santa Barbara I'm going down to San Diego and my husband is coming from Colorado and will be meeting me there. And how do you get to Santa Barbara? To from Santa Barbara to San Diego? We will take a ship. A ship? A ship down. Oh, my de mer. Someday the Senate may say the train will be coming here to Camulos and it will go all the way to Santa Barbara. Will it? Yes, yeah. they, they say in five years we'll have our train. Did you come? Oh, I came. Los Angeles in my train? I came in a wagon from Los Angeles. But how did you get to Los Angeles from Colorado? By the train? I came by the train, yes. I took the train well, you to sail to see the train. I, first, I took the train uh, to uh, Sacramento and then in, went into San Francisco and then came from San Francisco by ship down to Los Angeles. Oh. I know the trains are very good, but they frighten me. Too much noise, too much noise. Fortunately, I do not suffer from what you mentioned, the seasickness, so I'm, I'm all right. But the train trip and the wagon trip is very dusty and very dirty. And it takes so long, so long to get here just from Los Angeles. And, and like I, I told you, we're going all the way to Santa Barbara this afternoon, so we must leave soon. So if Belle, if Belle would... Well, I'm Belle, sure I'll take her around now. Belle, please, please take yes. her around and make sure that she meets Juventino. I think he will tell her about what is going on in the fields, and perhaps she will get to see some of our Indians. That is, I would appreciate that very much. Thank and you. And we look forward to seeing Trina's well oh. in your next Century of Dishonor. I, I am sure that that will be quite easy to do, you women. You, the women of Cumulos are very gracious. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Over around now? Yes. Adios. Hey, vaya con Dios. Gracias. Gracias. Let me show you what an interesting lady. Very interesting. What was she wearing on her head? Some sort of a fur piece. Oh. It's Americanos. Well, you know, Isabel tries very hard to stay fashionable. In fact, we have always gone into Los Angeles and they try to find the goddess ladies fashionable mm -hmm. so she will know what is being worn in the rest of the country. I wish she were here. There's a chapel. She will have been very sad to have missed Mrs. Jackson's visit. I am sure she will. Be glad to hear about her visit and how well you treated her, Amara. I tried to be as gracious as I could, but you know, I still don't like so many Americanos coming here. <laughs> That's why we left Los Angeles. Yes. We know. We do. Our ways were going away. Well, we have a wonderful life here at Rancho Camus. And of course, now we have Rejonaldo in Los Angeles and oh. we'll be assembling. And he is a lawyer. Yes. I had hoped that, as my daughter, that he would have come back when he finished law school and he would have been a, a, a lawyer here in Ventura, but no, no, he had to go into Los Angeles. I think there are great things ahead for him there. And of course, you always have my Juventino here to take care of things. Juventino is a godsend. A man can manage our rancho so well. It is so sad that my son-in-law has passed away. I know that my daughter was very, very grieved, but they had a very close relationship. And you know, she is quite a intelligent woman. And she and my oldest granddaughter, Josefa, are doing very well to manage this place along with the help of Juventino, who could not do it. Yes, he does like the schooling. 
but he knows the crops and he knows the horses. Even our little Juventino is getting along so well with the horses. I am tired. Do you think that I might be able to go and take a nap? I think we should all go take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah.